the hate army troll. It's the hate army, bro. Hate army. Shout that out guy. to hate. hate. Army. Good vibes to the Shout hate out to army. Hate. Shout out to hate. Shout out Shout to out hate. hate. Shout out to hate. Shout out for Shout hate. Out for hate. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? I just want to let you know I'm here. I'm actually a little early and ready to go. Usually I'm kind of rushing around, getting ready for the show, but today I actually, uh, I basically was like raring to go today. <laughs> After having a day and a half away, I'm so not used to that. <laughs> not to say that's not a good thing. It's a great thing. It was a great day and a half, which I'm going to tell you about on today's podcast. But uh, I was like, oh, I'm ready to go. What time is it? It's 10.55. The show doesn't even start for over 10 minutes. I was like, oh, well, do I really want to sit here and listen to music? Not really. So if you guys want to chat, I'm here. We could just talk a little bit. I won't turn the screen on yet. <laughs> But if you guys want to have a little bit of early chat, I'm down for that before we begin the podcast. Yeah, Usagi Jojo says you had a lot, a plenty of time to relax and recharge. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no, because even though I didn't have to do go grocery shopping, I didn't have an appointment, I didn't have errands to run, there was still a lot of work involved. Like my wife and I cooked twice yesterday, and dinner was actually quite more elaborate than a dinner that we would typically have. So, you know, we were both in the kitchen prepping, cook, preparing cooking, cleaning. There was a ton of dishes to clean after the meal. That's, that's the one thing about these holiday meals. They're absolutely amazing. They always taste great and they're memorable. But then you've got such cleanup after the fact. And when it's just me and my wife, it's like sometimes we scratch our heads like, why did we just do that? Like we like the food, right? But then it's like, oh. Now we have to clean up for like an hour because we created an entire sink full of dishes. We have to wipe down the entire kitchen that's now covered in, you know, food ingredients. It's like, so <laughs> we'll talk about that. I mean, the food was great. We actually really liked our, our dinner. So it was, you know, it was nice. But at the same time, it's like it would have actually been good if we just had a day where we could just sit around. Like we didn't even just get to sit around. We had other stuff we had to do. We had, like, a bunch of clothes we've been washing. We hadn't folded. We had to fold, like, two to three containers of clothes. So we actually had clothes for the week, you know. But we did fun stuff, too. We had a couple drinks and tried some chocolates and did a few other things. So it was a good day overall. You know, I did enjoy my Christmas. <clears throat> oh, indeed, JDTV. I hope you had a good Christmas. We did, we did. Don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining in any way, shape, or form. It's just... Even the, the one day a year that I had off that I literally did not think of work, did not really like open any, any work-related thing. I think once, no, twice during the day, I opened YouTube Studio and I approved comments just to have them approved. I didn't even really read them. I just went like, duh, 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 duh. <clears throat> and that was about it. I didn't really do much of else. I wanted to stay kind of unplugged for a day, which was a good thing. It's always a good thing to be unplugged. Especially when, you know, your job has you plugged into the internet pretty much nonstop. Uh, it's good to just be able to disconnect from that for a bit. Um, and not have to worry about, oh no, is this working? Oh no, did I set this up? Oh no, what's going on with this? Oh no, I need to track a bunch of news for tomorrow. And then I did anyway. Like I said, like the I did open up Twitter like one. Well, I say Twitter. It's X now, isn't it? I opened it up like once and <clears throat> saw a big story. I was like, oh, that's a big story for tomorrow's show. Let me get that. So I did. You know, and we're going to talk about that on today's show. But that's the thing with the nature of the work that I do. Like you're constantly, constantly having it in your mind of what's next. What's the next thing? You know, I was even thinking in my head <clears throat> over all the things we had talked about over the last couple of days in regards to like what we're doing in 2024, early 2024. Because now we know about the schedule that there really are no significant big new releases at all early on in the year. It's not until the very end of January before there's anything of note. And so we're like, well, we got a whole month. What do we do? And I know people want Baldur's Gate 3, so that's just a given. But it's like we're about to finish RoboCop. We're at the end. Maybe one to two more streams. That's done. You know, Like a Dragon Gaiden, probably two, three night streams, that's done. So within the next week or two, we're done with these games, and then we're going to have my year-end series, but then what's next? We're going to have several weeks, right? So what do you do? And, 
You know, I actually was thinking about that in my head, and I actually, I think I've come to a determination. I don't know if it's going to be something everyone's going to like, but it's, I got an idea. What I need is some feedback from you guys, too, because you guys know better than me when it comes to, for example, length of games and stuff. Like, you would know better than me. You've probably played certain games more than I have, um, and would have access to that kind of data of, you know, how long would you think it would take me to beat a certain game? I have a couple ideas in mind for what I think I would like to do. So I think we're going to talk about that today and try to uh, try to figure it out. I think that'll be a good idea today. You know, and then focusing on the year-end series and everything coming up the, that first week of January. Hopefully, if everything goes according to plan, you know, we have this week, which is a full week of streaming normal coming up. And then that first full week of January, I'll probably do my year-end series. So, <clears throat> Usagi Jojo says, maybe it'd be nice to rent a cabin off the grid for a few days. Yeah, but again, it sounds like a good idea. But number one, if I rent a cabin off the grid for a few days, I, I don't, I'm not working. I'm not making money, which I need to do to pay bills around here and keep stuff going. I don't really have the, the option of, say, taking several days off. When I did that at the end of October because I was so sick, I've set myself back to the point where I'm still really not even caught up on that. You know, that was a week that I was expecting a certain level of income. I don't have it and, you know, <clears throat> kind of playing catch up and everything. So it's like the day I don't work is the day I don't have income to pay the bills. And then how do I deal with that, right? So it would have to be a situation where if we're, let's say we're going to take three, four days off together, my wife and I. Well, I'd have to actually have a way to account for that money-wise, right? I'd have to figure that out. Um... And then in addition to that, what do we do with Jasper? You know, we can't just have Jasper here in a house by himself for three, four days. So now we got to look into what do you do? Is there a boarding service? Is there someone who can take care of pets? Do you trust someone to be at like a house sitter and come by like, uh, you know, once a day, maybe for an hour and spend time with him and feed it? You know, what do you do? Who knows? And that's, that's the thing. <laughs> that's life right now is... Basically, it's like these kind of things just aren't an option. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's life. If anything, I think just having a few, a few, like, stay-at-home days. Like, if it wasn't... Like, Christmas is my one day a year, right? I always say this. Christmas is literally my one day a year, correct? Um, if I could have, like, three, four days in a row, but we have a stay of staycation where maybe... You know, one day we stay home and we just do stuff at home. We watch TV. We hang out, right? We have, you know, nice time together. Maybe do stuff around the house we wanted to do and haven't had a chance to do. But then the next day we actually, like, go out. We, like, go out, go shopping, do stuff together out, have a nice dinner out or something like that. Like, if you had a series of days, then maybe it wouldn't feel like, oh, our day off is always ultra rushed and our day off is always, like, you know, <clears throat> hectic stressful but I don't have that option right now I would love to have that option I would love it that you know hopefully in the long term things get better you know whether it's financially behind the scenes whether it's making a little bit more money whatever it is so that it balances out and then we could do that you could have two three days off a week every once in a while not that that would be every week but I think that would be the ideal again again I've already talked about this uh, that that was kind of our idea for this year is that by the end of the year we wanted to like refinance all of our finances put you know refinance our mortgage put everything into the mortgage get all my back debts that I still owe paid and we could have done that if the United States didn't basically tank if our government wasn't so bad and screwed everything up and caused mass inflation caused all the interest rates to go up it screwed everything up like we were on pace I've been doing very well in the last three, four years, I've been doing very well of, of you know, being more responsible and uh, keeping everything under control. And, you know, I'm like, just stay the course, right? Just stay the course. I keep telling myself, just stay the course. But then it's like every time there's something else comes and screws us, and it's always out of our control, you know? What can you do? I mean, geez, we didn't even get to get a dishwasher this year. That was like one of our big goals for the year. Hey, let's have enough to have the dishwasher. Couldn't even do that. It was just thing after thing after thing that kept... That's where the money goes, right out the window. That's adult life, though, you know. I'm not bitching. I'm just saying that's that's what happens. So that's why we don't think about this stuff. Would it be great to have a longer holiday than, say, just a Christmas day? Yeah. 
but I don't even know how that would be viable right now, you know, with the way that things are going. Maybe long term, though, right? That's really what we're aiming for, is that long term things can get a little better. Not that every week there'd be two, three days off, but maybe once or twice a month I could take more days off to spend with my family and do more stuff, right? Anyway, we're going to start in a few minutes here. This is just me talking because I was here super early today. I was already ready to go. JDTV, yes, my year-end series is my Game of the Year awards. My most disappointing Game of the Year countdown. Okay. And um, what's the other thing? Oh, the new series, which we're going to do, which is very exciting. It's the Van Voted, or Viewer's Choice, Best Playthroughs of 2023. So I'm doing three year-end series this year, which I'm excited for. Very cool. <clears throat> Jeremy, we can see you. You said test and we can see you. This is it. Yes, you're here. Indeed, you were here. How am I today? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. I'm ready to come back. I'm ready to, to chill and talk about Christmas. I want to talk about the upcoming schedule ideas I have. I want to talk about this Rockstar Games info leak, which is incidentally exactly what I've been telling you guys for the last decade. Like, I don't think it could be any more dead on exactly true to what I've been saying for the last 10 years. It's just funny because all the stuff that I always say or surmise or guess at, everyone says, well, you're wrong, blah, blah, blah. And then slowly but surely, over time, everything that I've, I've been guessing at in the industry ends up being true. <laughs> slowly but surely, right? <clears throat> so here we go. Actually, if you guys can give me one second, I'm just going to do one thing really quick, and then, uh, and then we can actually get started with the show. I know it's pretty sad that I was dead on correct. I mean, one of these times I would prefer to not be correct because a lot of these predictions are very negative, but then I'm correct. And I'm like, oh, man. If only, you know. <laughs> the thing is I've been doing it for so long as an outside observer that I've become very good at kind of understanding these trends and actions and things that are happening in the gaming industry. <clears throat> okay, give me one second here. Hold on. And then we're going to begin. Give me a sec here. Ooh. Boy. Very good. All right, are we ready to start? I think we should get started, guys. Let me mute my uh, mic for a sec. We'll do the little intro. And then we'll officially get started with today's podcast. All right, let's do this.
What is going on everyone? I'm back. It's the post Christmas special and today we're going to be talking about of course everything that happened during Christmas but instead of just the usual we're going to talk about the future. What's going to happen upcoming in 2024? How about my year end series? How about ideas for playthroughs coming up soon? Well we also got some Rockstar leaks to discuss today so it's a very exciting podcast. Hope you'll stick around for all this and more right after the intro. Alrighty, everyone, so, indeed it is true, the eggnog has been drank, the tree has been trimmed, the roast beast has been devoured, for today is December 26, 2023, and Christmas is officially over for the year. But that doesn't mean the festive vibes stop, because here on DSP Gaming, we keep this party going, alright, we keep it rolling. And uh, it will keep rolling. You're still going to see these festive decorations. I'm probably not going to be using this border as much, to be honest. Today will probably be the last day or maybe next to last day. Um, but you will still see some cool winter stuff around here. I'm going to keep the, the festive uh, Christmas-themed animations up at, at least until the end of the month. Uh, maybe I'll even keep them going a little bit longer uh, until like early January, until we get to the year-end series. And then maybe I'll, I'll retire them and get the new setup for the new year going. But I love this time of year, and it's not over yet, you know. We still got till New Year's, so I hope that you guys had a great Christmas. Uh, on today's show, I'm going to tell you about mine. I'd love to hear about yours when we get to the Q&A segment uh, and the open discussion segment near the end of the show. Um, but yeah, I was not here for Christmas Eve night and also all day Christmas, so I'll tell you about my days off. Uh, I'll also tell you about what I got for Christmas. But you might have a little hint about that already. Although, every time I wear an undershirt like this, it actually bothers me. I don't know, it's like a pet peeve of mine if the undershirt's not even. <laughs> I guess it's even now, but it wasn't for a second there. Anyway, so, this should be a good show today. First of all, I'd like to say, happy holidays. I hope you all had a great Christmas. Everyone out there watching, whether you're here live with me this morning, whether you're watching on demand after the fact, I certainly hope that your holiday celebration was a fun one, a good one, a safe one. Um... I hope you got everything you wanted, and if you didn't, it's all good. Most people don't, and it's not really what the season is about anyway, right? For most people, it's supposed to be about spending time with family or friends, having meaningful moments, and or feeling a, 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 an overall feeling of like joy and happiness around you know how things are going in your life. A lot of people tend to forget that. They think, well, I didn't get what I wanted on Christmas morning, and therefore this is awful. Well, you have to stop being like the Grinch and start being like the Who's in Whoville, all right? That's all I'm going to say. So right now, you should paint a giant or attach a giant, uh, what do they call it, prosthetic nose onto your face, just like the cast of the live-action Grinch movie, and you should start singing Davudores in the streets right now, because it is the day after Christmas, and you know, now is the time. If you're ever going to, now would be the time, right? Uh, anyway, let's continue, shall we? So anyway, uh, let's talk about everything. Let's start at the beginning. Being that this is the day after Christmas, it is Boxing Day, for those who don't know. This is an annual holiday in Great Britain where they box each other in the streets. They just walk up, and if you're not careful, someone will just, oh, cold cock you, right in the jaw. And then they'll actually steal all your Christmas pudding. They'll go right into your pants or into your fridge, and they'll take all your leftovers. It's pretty messed up. I don't know why they think this is a great holiday over there when you're just walking and cold cocking people all over the streets, but that's just how it is. Now, some people would say that it's not that, but it has something to do with boxes or something like that. I don't know. I, I really don't care. I'm American. You know, I don't give a shit. <laughs> but happy Boxing Day to those who actually uh, celebrate it. I appreciate all of you out there who are still here hanging out with me today, despite the fact that it may still be about... Uh, you know, a holiday. In fact, Car Carlock or Carlack just said Boxing Day is about charity, orphanages, 
You put, they would put boxes on their doors for gifts for the kids, and you would typically give gifts to your servants. Oh, I see. So in your in your giant household of servants, because obviously it's typical in Great Britain that all of you over there would have insanely huge mansions, households. You know, you'd have like a butler whose name is like what? Like Wadsworth, right? And you'd have like a whole staff, like a, a cook, a live-in cook, uh, you know, a, a nanny, a wet nurse, uh, a maid, a series of maids. You'd actually have people who you clean your, your yards as well. So... You would sir. You that today would be the day that you would say, you know, happy Boxing Day, and they would you give them like a raisin, and they would say, oh, thank you so much. You finally fed us for the first time in the twenty-five years that we've been in indentured servitude to you. Uh, you know, right? So there you go. Obviously, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. I'm just joking. But anyway, guys, uh, let's talk about you know what I did. For my Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, because I know you guys want to know. I mean, why else would you be here, right? You don't care about games or YouTube shit. You want to hear about what I did on Christmas, right? So, basically, on Christmas Eve, um, on Christmas Eve, I finished up with my React stream. And after I finished up with my React stream, I realized, oh, I have to basically do, like, a bunch of stuff. Because I want to finish up with work and be done with it. I don't want to have to come back into this office at all. So I basically, even though I only finished one stream, I had to do all my day-end stuff, which includes updating my schedule, filming the daily wrap, uh, uh, uploading to multiple places. I had to spread out all the videos for the week for the React show. Uh, I had to set up the threads so that you guys could start nominating clips for next week's React show. So I basically had to do like double work in, in the same sitting to get it all done. And at the same time, <clears throat> as soon as I went offline with uh, DSP versus the Internet on DSP Reacts, my sister channel, I ran downstairs and my wife and I ordered some food. Because as I told you guys, we always order, like, Chinese food on Christmas Eve. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Listen to this one. This year, you ready for this? We didn't order Chinese food. We ordered Thai food instead. very exciting Thai food instead of Chinese food we wanted to mix it up because we had Chinese food like five years in a row you get tired of the same thing right so like let's do it different we ordered Thai food and I got this dish that was um like cashew nuts mixed in with these rice noodles and a bunch of veggies like a bunch of green peppers red peppers and other things and my wife got a different dish rice noodles but it had like bean sprouts and other veggies and the weird part was, we each ordered a noodle dish, and we each ordered it. We wanted spice level of two, please, because we're white, and white people can't take spice too much. <laughs> like we have like, you get like three, four, and five, you you start crying, and that's no good. You start crying during dinner. You just can't enjoy it. So we ordered level two. Um, <clears throat> and the weirdest part about this was, we're each eating our dinner. And my wife's like, it's good, but my God, this is so spicy. Next time, I'll definitely order level one or level zero. And I was eating mine, and I was like, wait, but I don't get it because I ordered spice level two, and I think mine is too mild. Like, I would prefer more spice. So it was kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears. You know, she laid in the baby's bed, and it was too soft. And then she laid in the dad's bed, and it was too hard. But then when she laid in the mama bear's bed, it was just right, the right softness. Or the porridge that was too cold and too hot. So it's kind of that, that methodology. It seems like they didn't, even though we ordered level two spice for each dish, they didn't nail it. One was way too much and one was way too little. So we actually split each other's dishes. She had half and half and I ate half and half of hers and mine. And then we actually really liked it. Um, we're coming to appreciate Thai food a little more because we don't eat it that often, but there are a bunch of Thai places out here. And we're like, oh, we're going to start getting this more often than I feel. I think it makes more sense because we liked it. So we had Thai food. <clears throat> and, um, excuse me. <clears throat> and then after that, we just kind of hung out for a while. We played with Jasper Kitty. Jasper got some of his toys. Yes, he opened his stocking of toys and we gave him a little green 
like cushy ball and a little green like tinsel no it was red a red tinsel ball that he was like playing with and running around the house looking at okay so he was playing with those and then we were um well my wife wanted to relax a little bit and she wanted to play a game and one of the games that has just been added to game pass is far cry 6 so she actually booted up far cry 6 and kind of played like through the intro and I helped her through, you know, telling her some of the differences between Far Cry 6 and 5. She had played 5 a couple years ago, and she liked the gameplay but hated the plot. And I agree with her. Like, I think the plot of Far Cry 5 is shitty, but overall the game's a little addicting when it comes to the, you know, the gameplay and stuff. So she started playing Far Cry 6. I watched her play that for a little bit. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> basically then she was like, all right, you got to open your presents. And I was like, but it's not Christmas yet. It's still Christmas Eve. And my wife's like, no, you have to open the presents. I said, but that's against the rules. The rules say you're not allowed to open your presents till Christmas Day. And my wife goes, these are our rules. We make them because it's our family. I don't want to hear you ever say that ever again. <laughs> I was like, okay, honey. <clears throat> and so I opened my presents. <clears throat> and the first present that I opened... Jasper is going crazy on the mic. If you're wondering why the mic is moving, if you hear anything, he's rubbing his face all over the mic. Jasper, you're being very ridiculous today. Look at this. There he goes. Okay, so first of all, I open my first present, all right? And it is this very nice sweater, as you can see. Now, this sweater can be zipped up as well, but I actually zipped it up, and I'll show you. It looks pretty nice, right? I actually really like it zipped up. The problem is, the sun is out today. So as I was setting up for today's stream, I had it zipped up just like this. And I'm like, oh, it looks good zipped up. Wow, what a nice sweater. I really like this one. Look, it's nice elaborate. Look at the design on it, right? It's the most elaborate sweater that I own. I, a lot of people are saying it looks like a cardigan. I have no clue. Maybe it is. I don't know the criteria for what's a cardigan or what's just like, a normal sweater or whatever i have no idea all right but the other thing i like is that it's a color i don't have like i don't have any clothes of this color so it's perfect it like accentu accentuates accentuates and expands my wardrobe options right it is warm and cozy but the problem is the sun is out today so i'm sitting in the office with it zipped up i'm like oh like i'm getting hot i started sweating like i'm not even kidding like my chest was sweating i was like oh what the frick it's freaking winter and I'm sweating wearing a sweater in, in in the house. Why? The heat the heat doesn't reach this office, just to make it clear. It's not like my heat is blasting in my house and it's hot in here. The heat does not reach this office at all. The problem is the sun's out, and when the sun is out, it beats on this office wall and heats the office up. So I unzipped it, and that's what I'll have to do. It's 100% a cardigan. You guys think so? <clears throat> okay. If it's a cardigan, it's a cardigan. I'm rolling with that. I'm going to say it's my Christmas cardigan. A gift for my wife. I really like it. Um, so, I think it feel, it's comfy. It looks nice. It's all good. And it's, it's nice, too. I can wear this outside, too. Like, it's not just one something you wear around the house, right? But I'm hoping, like, if I get hot, I have to unzip again. That's why I had it unzipped to start. Because, man, it gets hot wearing this thing uh, indoors because of the freaking the sun on the office. If it were a cool, rainy day outside, it would be perfect, you know? But what are you going to do? So, anyway. So, this is my, my first gift. And my wife also got me some cologne. Uh, I Here's the thing. We used to wear cologne and perfume. Not expensive ones, by the way. I want to make that clear. We would go to like the discount stores like TJ Maxx or Marshalls and whatever they have on sale in there. You know, you would grab a bottle for like between 10 to 30 bucks and it would be like a giant bottle that would last you like a year, right? So that's what we used to do. And we used to wear cologne and perfume all the time pre-COVID. And then when COVID hit, it just screwed everything up. Like, we stopped going out. We stopped regularly wearing this stuff. Basically, life just changed. It was a shame. I think that it was nice. Every every week we were going out and we were having good activity together. And we had regular places we like to hang out and go and eat. It all changed. A lot of the places we used to go were closed. Or changed to different businesses after COVID. It really did uh, screwed up a lot of stuff. So, my wife actually, for the first time in years, bought me a new bottle of cologne... I was like, oh, this is nice. I'm actually, I'm wearing it right now. And before you ask me what it is, I literally have no idea. I don't, <laughs> I don't pay any attention. You know me, I'm just a, I'm an oaf. 
I have no. I'm sure if you ask my wife, she'd be able to tell you exactly what it is. I have no clue. It smells great. I'm. I'm pretty sure this is one that either we've had before, or like we were in a store and we, we You know, you have the samplers. You smell the samplers, and we smelled it. And really liked it. It's a little. It's a little like citrusy. I have no clue what it is. But anyway, um, it's great. So, yeah, I'm wearing this. I'm wearing some cologne today with my brand new sweater. So I'm basically all decked out in my Christmas gifts, right? That's what I'm wearing right now, which is nice to have this the day after Christmas. It's nice to know that my wife thought had some, some nice thoughts she put into it and got me some nice things. Um, so, yeah, so that was our Christmas Eve, basically. So it was food, and she played some Far Cry 6. Jasper had his toys. I had my gifts. Um, and then basically we had like a drink. And that night, what did I have? Did I have? No, I didn't have the cider until yesterday. So last night, I think I just had like a mixed drink. Oh, sorry, I got a burp. Excuse me. Yeah, I just had like a, I had a, a like a, a margarita. We that's right. We each had margaritas. We each had margaritas last night. No, Christmas Eve. We each had margaritas, and then we went to sleep. Um. So Christmas Day we got up. And Christmas Day was both a chill, but fun day as well. All right? It was a chill, but fun day. We woke up, and uh, we're cooking. We were cooking breakfast together. And so we had scrambled eggs with cheese and a little bit of bacon bits, and we had uh, turkey sausage that was frozen. We just, you know, we warmed it up. And uh, waffles that we tossed in the microwave. Not the microwave, the uh, toaster. I know. We, we didn't do everything. We were originally going to make everything from scratch. And we were like, do we really want to spend hours cleaning everything up? Because we're already going to have an elaborate dinner. And we're like, probably doesn't make sense to do two elaborate meals. Let's do an easier breakfast. So we did. And as we were uh, eating our breakfast, uh, we had Christmas music playing, uh, which was nice. And then basically after that, you know, we washed up. We, should, we showered or whatever. And uh, we fed the animals out back. Because like I told you guys, we have all kinds of woodland creatures that come into our backyard every morning. Because number one, we have some nuts that we'll like put out on the back step. And number two, we have this suet dispenser now. It's a little cage and you put a block of suet bird food in there. And every day, animals, squirrels, birds of every kind come by and eat this stuff. And it's really nice because we had a ton of animals in the backyard and that gave Jasper something to do. He was so excited uh, to see all these wild creatures out there. Um you know, running around and having a good time. So he loves that. Like I said, I've always told you guys, this is a this is a cat house, a cat style house. Like the, with all the windows, with the amount of space to run around in, the things to climb and jump in, and then having a backyard where we can have all these wild creatures come by. He loves it. So he was having a great time yesterday with that. Um, geez, all the things we did over the course of the day. So my wife definitely played more Far Cry Six. She got further into the game, which was nice. I watched her play. Um, we had all kinds of stuff. We had a box of chocolates. I told you, we bought a box of chocolates when we had gone to Costco a few weeks ago. And it was like a holiday-themed box of Belgian chocolate. So we opened it up, and we had some of those. Uh, my wife doesn't really like white chocolate. I think it's okay. So I ended up having like two or three chocolates that were all white chocolate style. One of them had like cookie pieces in it. One of them was supposed to have pistachio, but didn't really taste like pistachio. Um, the one that I had that I really liked, it was so weird. It was supposed to be like tiramisu. And I ate it. I was like, it tastes nothing like tiramisu, but it tastes like a like a chocolate cookie cream. And it had, like, cookie pieces in it. I was like, dude, this chocolate's really, really good. And my wife had a couple, too. Uh, I think one had, just like, strawberry in it. She loved the strawberry one. So we had some of that. Over the course of the day, I had a couple drinks. I had, like, some of the uh, apple whiskey uh, that was in there. That was nice. I actually had a few shots of the peanut butter whiskey over the course of the day. Um, <clears throat> what? Jeez, what else did we do? So dinner was very elaborate. So first of all, our dinner protein was donated by my parents. It was one of their gifts. They actually get, had given this to, uh, to us before Thanksgiving, but we opted to save it till Christmas. So what it was, it was s these turkey breasts, which are pretty small. They're only like this big, okay? But they're stuffed with stuffing and cranberries, and then they were tightly wrapped with bacon. So what you do is you roast these in your oven for like 45 minutes, <clears throat> and the outside, the bacon becomes crispy and full of flavor, and the turkey absorbs the bacon flavor. So as you're eating it, you're like, wow, it's like turkey flavor, or a bacon flavored turkey, which is amazing, never had that before, and the stuffing actually tasted really good too. Um, and then we made two sides, homemade, 
uh, sweet potato mashed potatoes. So we chopped them up, we boiled them up, mashed them up, added brown sugar, some butter, some vanilla, um, and other things to it, right? And then uh, we had homemade green bean casserole. Now, the green bean casserole was the first time we had ever made this. It worked, but it didn't. So allow me to explain. So we opted, we wanted to go totally, how can I say, like totally authentic. So we got fresh green beans. You know, you could make green bean casserole with canned green beans, but then you're talking about green beans that are like mushy, right? Like they're already mushy and not that good. They probably taste fine, but it's gonna become like a, like a goo. So we opted for the fresh green beans. The problem was, with the green beans that we got, it took a long time to prep them, which we didn't foresee. So we're standing there, we're like, so should we warm up the oven yet? Well, wait, let's prep the green beans first. And it took us no exaggeration, like 40 minutes, because we had to go through all the green beans, cut off the ends, wash them all, chop them into smaller pieces, and put them aside. It took forever. It was like, oh my God. We definitely, next time, are probably not gonna do that. So then, what do we have in the green bean casserole? There was like cream of mushroom soup, some cheese, some of those uh, fried onions that are like breaded fried onion crunchy thingies, whatever they're called. Put those in, some seasonings, and my wife was seasoning it with like salt, pepper, and other things like that, right? So we did it all, and we tossed the, well my wife made the mashed potatoes first, put them aside, and then we tossed the turkey into the oven for like 20 minutes, and then we added the green bean casserole after so the turkey cooked for like 45 minutes and I think the green bean casserole cooked for like 25 minutes. And the truth is, we cooked it exactly the right amount because when we took out the casserole, it was perfectly crispy on top and if we had left it in more, it would have burnt. We knew that, we saw it, like, oh, that definitely would have burnt if we left it in longer, so we're glad we took it out when we did. The problem is, because we had used fresh green beans, they were more crunchy. I was okay with that. But my wife didn't really like that. She was like, man, I'm so used to green beans not being this crunchy. So the flavor was good. Like the flavor was like tasty. We actually really liked the green bean casserole, the flavor. But having them be more crunchy was a little weird because you know, how often do you actually eat fresh green beans? I don't, we don't. We usually would buy like canned veggies. So it was a little weird. They were all right, let me put it that way. Like the flavor was good, but yeah, it's not the consistency you're, you're, you're expecting. So it's not as good as you probably would think it would have been. Uh, I still liked it, but basically what it was, we ate all this food, right? So the turkey was amazing. The mashed potatoes were good. The casserole was like, uh, all right, but not as good as we thought it would have been. And then it's like, oh, okay. So now it's time to clean up. Like, oh no, dude, so many dishes just for that. For those three things we just described, you know, just to make the mashed potatoes, you've got the pot you boiled them in, you've got the bowl that you mashed them in, you got a hundred utensils and things, you know, for the green bean casserole, we got the multiple cutting boards, the strainer, you know, all again, all the utensils, the things we used to mix it with and serve it with, and then the pan that we cooked it in, and then we got the pan that we baked the, the turkey in, and that all, you know, it had, it had stuck to the pan, because that's the thing, you're, you're cooking on bacon, bacon's gonna stick right to the pan, even using cooking spray or whatever, it still sticks, there's nothing you can do about it. So now you gotta scrub the pan. Dude, it took so long. So the food was good. Like we really enjoyed our Christmas dinner. But the, the, the prep took like over an hour. The cooking took 45 minutes. And then the cleanup afterward took like another hour. So you're talking like three and a half hours out of our day for dinner, right? Out of a day that we wanted to relax. And for three and a half hours, we were essentially just cooking, baking, cleaning. Oh. That's the frustrating part. If you have, listen, if you have a big family and you put a lot of work into having a homemade meal, number one, I certainly hope that your family appreciates it because it's a lot of work. You know, I'm an adult, I get this. I, I really now have grown to appreciate what my mom and dad used to do for us when I was a kid. And in fact, I called my mom on Christmas Eve and I personally thanked her. I said, I just wanna let you know, I'm really thankful for the holidays and the way that you did up the house and everything back then because now I have these really nice memories of all of that and I can tell my audience about it and they wanna know, they wanna hear about what I did when I was a kid, they're very interested and it's nice to have these really positive memories to share with everybody and I really am thankful for that. And she was so happy that I said that, you know, you may not realize that but your parents would be super happy to hear from you and hear messages like that. I recommend everyone do that around the holidays because I, I'll tell you, they will appreciate it. Even if you don't think they would and they don't say nothing, they'll still appreciate it, okay? So anyway, um, if you have a big family, right, and you do all that work, 
then you're feeding a million people and it seems like it's worth it. When there's only two of us, it's me and my wife, right? And you're doing all this work. And you're like, and the other, the other sad fact is there was no turkey left over. We had just enough for the two of us. The mashed potatoes were good, but we were like, there's not really, do we really want to save them? We're not, we didn't have any other meals planned where we could really eat the mashed potatoes with them. And the green bean casserole, we didn't like that much because the green beans were too crunchy. So we have no leftovers. So we did all that work and we have no leftovers, at least with Thanksgiving, right? Thanksgiving, we put a ton of work into it. And then we had like three days of leftovers. So it was kind of worth it. But in this case, it really didn't feel like it was worth it at all. I felt like, man, we worked our butts off on Christmas to make this meal, and it was good at the moment, but man, it didn't seem like it was worth all the effort because there's nothing to speak of after the fact, right? So after that, after this elaborate Christmas dinner, um, basically, if you could believe it, I said to my wife, all right, well, first of all, this kind of sucks, but we definitely need to fold clothes. We've been washing clothes like all weekend, and we never folded them. So, like, my drawers are empty. I didn't even have a clean pair of underwear in my dresser to put on today. And I was like, we definitely got to fold clothes. So, this way we'll have clothes for the week. And, of course, she's begrudgingly like, ah, well, I guess you're right. We got to do it. So, we folded clothes together to make it fast. Usually, my wife would fold all the clothes, but I helped her this time. We got through it. We had Christmas music playing while we did it. <clears throat> and then, so, so we want to do. It's Christmas night, right? Well, let's watch Christmas stuff, right? My wife goes, nah, Christmas is basically over. So let's not watch. So we ended up watching zero Christmas content this year. We didn't watch the Polar Express. We didn't watch the Muppet Christmas Carol. We didn't watch Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. We didn't watch a Claymation Christmas. We didn't watch the Charlie Brown Christmas. We didn't watch Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. We didn't watch Santa Claus is Coming to Town. We didn't watch Jingle All the Way. We didn't watch Home Alone. We watched nothing. Not, no Die Hard. Nothing. Zero. <laughs> so at least what I'm happy is... I watched some stuff for myself and I reviewed it for you guys, right? Like, we had, I had watched Gremlins, I had watched Scrooge, I had watched National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, I even watched a new movie that I'd never seen before, Christmas with the Cranks. So at least I got my Christmas fix before Christmas because we watched absolutely no Christmas stuff on Christmas at all. So, there you go. Um... And then after that, what do we do? We watched someone play the Bloodborne DLC. Yes, we started watching someone play the Old Hunter's Bloodborne DLC. And we basically watched up through them going through the intro part, the first few hours, and get to the Ludwig boss and beat Ludwig. And let me tell you, for all the people that gave me shit many years ago about when I got to Ludwig and he kicked my ass and I rage quit that DLC... I don't think I've, I've seen, because we've watched a few people play that DLC now. We haven't seen a single person easily get through that beginning part and beat Ludwig. This, this is another person. It took them like two hours to beat Ludwig, you know? That is a hard-ass boss. You know what I mean? Um, very, very tough. So, I'm happy that I went back later on and I replayed Bloodborne and I understood it better. And then when I got to Ludwig, I kicked his ass. Remember that? Well, man, you guys gave me so much shit when I first played it many, many years ago. But it's funny because everyone had a hard time their first time. That's one of the harder DLCs ever for, like, any game, right? It really is just really difficult. So anyway, you know, we watched that. We fast-forwarded through. We didn't watch, like, two hours of, of this person fighting the boss. But we fast-forwarded through that. And uh, and that was I think that was that. I, like I said, I had a few shots of peanut butter whiskey at night before I went to sleep. And that was about it. That was our Christmas. So our Christmas was nice. Like, let me, don't get me wrong. Our Christmas was nice, but I do feel like the fact that we spent like three and a half hours essentially cooking dinner and cleaning after it, and then we had to fold clothes, <laughs> right? It kind of like took away. It would have been nice if we just had a day where we could have just done everything relaxing. But, you know, if you're going to have a big elaborate meal, someone's got to cook it. Someone's got to clean after it, and it's us. So... You know, it did take away from the day, I feel. But overall, I did enjoy a, having a day and a half away from streams and from work and everything. I had a great time with my wife. I always do. Whenever we spend time together, we have a great time. Um, but it's funny because I, for, before I started the podcast this morning, someone said in the chat, I think it was Usagi Jojo, he says, you know, what you guys should really do is you should plan out a uh, time that you could like, go to a cabin or something out there and spend like a few days together and that way you don't have to worry about cooking and cleaning or whatever, you know. 
I was like, you know, that would be nice, but there's a couple factors why we can't do that. Factor number one, we have a cat named Jasper Kitty. And if we were to go away for a few days, we'd have to find a way for him to get taken care of. Now, does that mean that we put him in a boarding thing? I mean, that might actually traumatize him. He's never been with anyone but us before, you know? Plus, those are expensive for what I'm to understand. Do we pay for, like, a house sitter to come by and for an hour or two a day play with him, feed him? He is very, very afraid of other humans than us. When we have people who come and visit the house for various reasons, like this year the Comcast guy came by, right? When he came by, Jasper runs for the hills and he hides under the bed and wants nothing to do with anyone. He just, you know what I mean? Like, he's afraid. He doesn't want to interact with other humans. He doesn't trust them. Um, so, I don't know how that would go down. That's number one. Number two, I just don't have the luxury of having multiple days away from work. You know, for example, this weekend was great, and I was happy to celebrate it because you guys were so supportive back during my Christmas marathon on Saturday. I got a bunch of extra tips, a bunch of extra memberships. Because of that extra, essentially, that I got that day, it allowed me to say, oh, well, now I have the next one to two days I'm not going to be streaming. It makes up for that. Essentially, the extra that I made on Saturday covers the fact that yesterday or two days ago, you know, I only streamed half and yesterday I didn't stream at all. It covers that. So now it's as if I did a normal week, basically, you know? Because that's the other weird thing. People are like, oh, you made so much. You made bank on, on the Christmas marathon. Yeah, and it basically spaces out because I didn't work for like two days after that. So it's just even. It breaks even as if it were a normal week, you know? It's not like I ran off like a bandit making tons of money. Um, and it, I'm happy for that. I'm grateful that you guys allowed me to do that. But how on earth would I have, like, how would I make enough extra to basically account for like a whole week away from streams? And to give you the perfect example of this, I was sick. At the end of October, I had probably I had COVID. You know, I say probably because I had every symptom of COVID, but we didn't take a COVID test. So I guess it would be a little irresponsible to say I had COVID when I'm not 100% sure I did, but I'm pretty sure I had COVID. Okay. It was really bad. Um, I lost about a week of work. And when I came back, I mean, yeah, things went well, but the problem was I lost a week of work and there's no way to make up for that. So I've been hurting since the end of October. And things have been tight and stuff, you know, this is the season when things should be up, right? Like, oh my god, views are, are up and, and income is up. You, I've been I'm penny pinching, basically. You know, I, there was weeks when I was like, I don't know if I get the new game this week or whatever. You know, that sucks. It's stupid, but that's just what happens when you don't work for a week and you're, you're self-employed like me. That's a, just a week you had zero income. You know, it's not, in, the, in the old days, it basically used to be that there was so much ad revenue to go around on YouTube. Like tons and tons of ad revenue. You have no concept. It was like 10 times stronger than today. That even if I was sick for a week, all the residual views and stuff I was getting on all my content would add up to so much ad revenue, it wouldn't even matter. It would be like, you know, oh no, I lost a tiny little extra because I didn't upload this week, but so much other stuff brought in revenue, it didn't matter. Now it's very, very much the streams, these live streams, this is where I make the vast majority of all of my income. So if I didn't stream right now, I would go out of business. Like no exaggeration, if I said, I'm just gonna become an offline YouTuber again like I used to be and just make on-demand videos, <laughs> within a week, I'd be done. I wouldn't be able to pay anything. It's the streams that keep me alive. So if I'm not on stream, you know, how do I account for the fact that I wanna take a whole week off to spend with my wife? Where's that money coming from, you know? So right now, we're not in that kind of a situation because I know people say that kind of stuff. Oh, well, if Christmas isn't enough, why don't you take more time off? I can't right now. I would love to. In the future, it may be possible. You know, we're looking to hopefully in the next couple of years get to a better situation financially. We can't right now. We're stuck, you know, because of everything that's happened in the United States with the government and interest rates and inflation. And I, I don't want to sit here and bitch about politics and stuff, but it really has negatively affected us. And that's stuff that's out of our control. We didn't make the economy tank. We didn't make interest rates triple in the last two years. That's the government and, and all kinds of shit going on that screwed everything up. Hopefully those things go be get better. And in the long run, things will get better. You know, we'll see. But for now, it is what it is. We enjoyed our two days or day and a half together. And now we're kind of back into the normal grind again. My wife's already at work and, you know, back to normality. It is what it is. But uh, thank you all. For, for allowing us to have that time by helping us and supporting us earlier this week. That's really appreciated because, again, it's very much because of you that we're able to do that kind of stuff. So thank you so very much for that, okay? Um, so ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to take a quick moment to remind all of you, as I cancel out this ad, 
because I want to talk to you for a second, so I'm canceling an ad that was about to play on the stream. Um, that I rely on crowdfunding to make my living. That is how I actually support my business is through crowdfunding. It's not, it's not paid product placements. It's not paid promotions on a stream. It's not click this referral code and, and buy a shitty product and make me a few extra bucks. It's not let me sit here and shill and advertise to you constantly. It's your support during streams primarily is what keeps me afloat. So if you like this content, if you've enjoyed this podcast, if you enjoyed all my holiday stuff, if you're looking forward to everything that I just mentioned to you, and you think that this could particularly be something interesting in the future, okay, let me know by supporting the stream in one of these following ways. Memberships. Right now we're at 687 members. We were over 700. In fact, we were at 720 members the other day. And I went on Christmas break, and I come back, and we're at 687. And I've had enough. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It would be nice to get back to 700 today, considering the fact we have a full-length Baldur's Gate 3 stream, and we have a nice Like a Dragon chill stream later today. It would be great if we could get back to 700 members today. So please consider becoming a member, or maybe consider gifting some memberships. Listen, I know Christmas is over, but this evening of giving continues, all right? And people around here will be very uh, appreciative of receiving a gifted membership. I'm very sure of that. So please consider maybe gifting some memberships to the channel. Um, you know, super chats, super stickers, all great. Super thanks on a video. Thank you for those. Tips are great. Right now, we will actually have the tip goals. Uh, well, yeah, let me put it this way. Yes and no, we will. If we hit $100 in tips today, I will absolutely put on a hat. But I'm not going to be wearing a vest over a cardigan. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna dress up like I'm, I'm the freaking kid, the, the little brother from the Christmas story who can't even move because he has so many things on as he goes outside because his mom is overprotective. Um, but we will still have some tiered rewards if we hit those goals. So please consider tipping, it helps a lot. My day off is just around the corner. Yes, tips would absolutely help for that day. Again, grocery shopping, pet supplies, and other things I need to do. They're all, it's all the liquidity I have is from tips during these streams. So if you could tip today, that support would be greatly appreciated. Okay? Um, there you have it. That's all I'm going to say. There you have it. Uh, I'm not going to talk about this all day long. Tipping me helps me more than anything.